mission is simple. We're consolidating the sport. We're bringing together all the different players in the sport to come onto one platform. And I believe that P1 today has developed this platform. I'm in the West End of London with a fascinating individual, a man called Asif Rangunwala. Asif is a new breed of British but Pakistani-born business people who has a high profile in business, in social life, but above all in charity. It's a great pleasure to be with him and to talk to him. Asif, thank you for talking to me. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank you. Now, Asif. The best place to begin is that I would say to you that you're a man on two missions. Yes. And I think your first mission is to do business. Yes. Now, you, you seem to do any business from powerboat racing to making buns to halal foods to, <laughs> to student accommodation. Yeah. Do you do any business? Are you a serial entrepreneur? Uh, I would say that this is something that was uh, put into me, uh, first of all, by being born to two people, my parents who uh, both had uh, uh, intelligence, integrity, uh, business sense, and uh, both of them were very established people. And I think that that sort of came with the DNA. But uh, in later years, when I was 16 or 17, I started to work for my father. And I would say that the credit goes to him. He, he taught me everything I know. So what, what, is it, what is the challenge about business? I mean, how do you, because it's clear you can do any yeah. business. Is that correct? Yeah, so I, I, I would put it again in the words of my father because yeah. I learned everything from okay. him, right? And he always told me, he said, son, there are two parts to a human being. One is how intelligent you are, and the other is how much of a human being you are. And I think if you adopt that in whether you do business or you do anything else, uh, if you can extract from people, either through asking extremely smart questions or being extremely tough, or then being extremely humble and nice and allowing others to get the credit, you get the best out of people. So, I, so you think a carrot and... Stick approach. Stick approach. Is, that, is that what it is? Yeah, I, I think to some extent it does work mm -hmm. because, uh, uh, you know, if you kick, they will bow. But you don't always need to kick people to get them to bow. You know, you, 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 you assess the individual and some people need kicking. Some people just need a little bit of gentle encouragement. So are you saying that business is more about human psychology and pulling the right levers? Yeah. And making people perform. Is that, is that yeah. really the key to success? Yeah, I, I think, I, I, I think uh, again, I, I told you, unfortunately or fortunately, I was, I was trained by my father and he used to always tell me in the early days, he used to say, he said, son, he said, machines you can fix, fix humans you can't. Okay. So you have to tackle them in a way which is psychological more or, you know yes it is it is a little bit of a game and and i think the sooner one understands mm -hmm. the individual the better it is to tackle him and get the work out of them so why why is it so important to to make money succeed in business so you can give it away <laughs> 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 so, so let me let me just yeah. hold you on to that point that you're saying that your reason, yes, largely, yeah. uh, to do different businesses and to make money is to is to give it away. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I believe that that humans only need that much. You can only spend that much. You can only eat that much. You can only leave behind that much. Uh, and uh, you know, again, there's a very famous saying which says that what you give away is yours. And what you leave behind, you don't know what they're going to do. With it. 
<laughs> and, uh, and another challenge which comes with uh, making money, of yes. course giving it away, but actually giving it away to your children. Now, because that has a sort of double-edged sword, as it were. Yeah. I believe that you need to instill, instill the correct values in your children. I also, and that, that's what my parents did with me. Uh, I believe that you need to teach them the right ways because, you know, at the end of the day, they are all individuals. Most of them have your DNA, you know, unless <laughs> somebody's been naughty. <laughs> uh, but I, I think it's got to do with uh, not only guiding them, but also listening to them. Again, it goes back to that psychological thing. You have to make an assessment of what your child is like and how you treat them. And they, they, by the time they're 13, 14, these are individuals, they're smart, most of them are smart, uh, and they make up their own minds, and then they do exactly what they want. But I think that early stage education, as you call it, even at home, is really, really important mm. because that builds, that, that builds their futures. But doesn't money, too much money, spoil children? Uh, I think if you, <clears throat> if you address it in the right way with them and teach them the values, um, and I used to remember that uh, when I was growing up, I could only look into the window and say, ah, my father can afford this for me, but I can't have it. Yeah. But what I was really <coughs> leading towards, mm. uh, Asif, was I know that in spite of your father being a wealthy person, yes. you actually are self-made. And, yeah. that, that, and, and that process of making it on your own, given you that dignity is not so easy for people who inherit an empire no. to have that similar dignity. So I want you to just talk a little bit about that for me. So let me start with uh, when I first joined my father, he told me three. He said, Asan, I owe you and your other siblings three things. I owe you an education. I owe you some money towards your home and your marriage. And he said, I owe you a job. If you can't keep it, I don't need you. So I think that philosophy has carried on. And I believe that, uh, you know, have no expectations and you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so, so, I don't know if I've answered yeah, Well, you have, you have, uh, by reference to your father yeah. and on every occasion. Yeah. But that's good. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. But last question on business. It's so important that to have certain values yes. when you are have the responsibility of running a business. Yes. It's really important because your values actually will dictate the happiness and the contentment and, yes. and enjoyment and prosperity of the people that work for you, mm. including the carrot and stick people. Yeah. So just tell us what values should you want adopt in business? So, so I believe that in, in, in the values that you adopt in business uh, is you give people the opportunity to get the credit. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you get credit or not. If they do a good job, you get the credit anyways. Uh, secondly, I believe that you need to have a, you need to have the skill of forgiveness. If you can't forgive people, doesn't work because they will leave you okay and once you create that sort of gap between yourself and your senior employees for that matter or even the junior ones uh, generally people move on because they just can't get along and finally I would say that look I think you have to treat human beings like human beings and not because you pay them that you expect them to you know, to use a better word, you know, really sort of fan your, you know, f uh, sort of blow wind into your sails. You need to be able to treat humans as humans. Uh, I also believe that when they are wrong, you need to tell them. And, and my philosophy at work is that you get, it's like baseball, you have three strikes. The first is a lack of knowledge, so it's, you can forgive them. The second is a lack of experience. You can forgive them. 
the third is a strike, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like a sergeant major. <laughs> because I know that you can be quite, uh, you can be quite tough at times, but that, that's good. Yeah. But you're equally forgiving and rewarding. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah, the key. Yeah, you yeah. have to be, you have to be human about these things, you know, and, and, and it doesn't necessarily work with everybody. Uh, but, you know, in, in my career, I find that it's paid off for me big time. Uh, you know, I, I still have people who've been working with me since the day I started, yes. you know, which is rare. So let's, uh, let's go back to the 14th century <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> and um, it was uh, this, your family, of course. Yeah. Are Maimans, yes, and they originate from Sindh, and I believe uh, so. History books say that in the 14th century, a, a saint converted this right. tribe, yes. Sindhi tribe, yeah. to Maimans or Momans, yes. if you like. Moments. And he said to the Maimans, he said, "Your mission is to earn and to give." Yes. So I think you're carrying out both those missions. The first mission is, of course, to earn. To earn and yes. you, you, you articulated that yeah. beautifully in, at the beginning of the program. And of course, your passion and your love yes. is to give. Yes, it is. So, how does that wind up in your mind, what I've just said to you about the history? How does that ring true? As, as a Maimon, uh, which used to be known as Moments, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I believe that it started in Sindh with Maghan and Chagan and it moved on to Gujarat yes. and so we have a large community in both uh, Pakistan and India and I I believe that the objectives that Maimans have is that we should uh, we should supplement the efforts of others within our community to bring them up with us and uh, you can see that within the community all over the place, as you are one of us also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> uh, I also believe that there is uh, this, this connection between being a good human being and also when you, when you see people who are not as well off, they don't need to be as well off as you, but at least they also need the comforts in life that you have already got. And I think one of the philosophies that our organization has is that wherever we work, we put something back into the society. You, you know, I think if more business, and, and there are many businessmen, to be fair, to this world, because the world wouldn't be going successfully yeah. if it wasn't, who give back and the, everybody gives back in their own way okay we we are a little more bureaucratic about it and we are a little more structured because we've been there for longer but so so if you if you don't mind can we talk about your father because yeah. in a sense of course one of the things you inherited from him yes i mean he came from actually burma in, in right. at, the, at the time of and partition and i i believe he actually is self-made because they lost most of their wealth yes, before that did. time. Yes, they did. And one of his passions, and I think the beginning of this process, is him setting up the World Maimon Foundation. Yes. Which is a, which is a charity. Yeah. Was that the beginning of your introduction mm, to charity? No. So uh, I can I can go a little further back yeah. than that. Okay. Uh, I th I think again, first of all, the 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 sense of uh, giving or charity uh, started many years ago. I think it was inducted by my grandfather who uh, was one of the main uh, proponents of the, uh, Mus uh, there's, there's a Muslim free hospital in Burma. Okay. And so he used to not only spend his money but give his time to that. I, I think that sense of being a good guy and doing the right mm -hmm. things has been there forever. So in 1971 he created uh, the ZVM Rangunwala yes, Foundation okay. in Pakistan and uh, built the community center and I think it was the first of its kind. So but, uh, how yeah. many places now does um, your charitable activities uh, uh, So we're, we're virtually global. Mm. Yeah, we, you know, we, uh, um, you know, my late father, he sort of uh, 
uh, I think before he left, he, he told me, he said that, um, he said, yeah, I made a big mistake. And I said, what was that, Dad? And he said, Asif, I couldn't give it away. <laughs> so he says, before you go, make sure you give it all away. Okay. <laughs> so I think, I think he was very clear. He, he believed that wealth was a responsibility given by God. And it was not for you. Yes, you could use some of it, but the idea was that it's a responsibility that has been bestowed on us and we need to exercise our minds and our, uh, you know, heart to give away at least a, quite a bit of it. In a way, I was thinking of what I should call you, you know, other than a man on two missions. And I thought I should call you a, a charity <laughs> <laughs> So the, 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 the question really is this, yeah. that you've redefined the way your charities run or the family charities run. Yes. And uh, people often talk about coming to you for a grant or, or whatever. Yeah and feeling as though they're in dragon's den. <laughs> uh, your approach yes. is different and it combines certain aspects. I want you to articulate this methodology, okay. which is very successful indeed. Yes, th thank you for yeah. asking that. I think that's a brilliant question mm -hmm. because I think it mixes both the business side of our, the way we operate as well as uh, uh, you know, the philanthropy side. So, I have been made responsible for money that is not mine. Yes. So, if I was uh, managing somebody else's money, I would take, and I am an asset manager in, the, in, in, in my business life, and I manage uh, money for outside organizations, and I know how much dedication and commitment I have. So when they decide to come here, you know, the whole office is up and down and getting ready for them. So in the same way, I believe this is God's money, which my father told me, and I have to be responsible for it. So I need to adopt policies which will make sure that the money is hitting the wood from the trees, as I call it. Very good. Okay. Uh, I, I believe nobody does it wrong in philanthropy. Everybody does it, you know. At least they have the heart to give it away. Yeah, they might not get it right. And I believe the reason we have gone this far in it is because I've been operating in it for 44 years now. Huh. So, you know, it's, it's helped me define a philosophy in giving, which some people have and some people don't have. And there's nothing wrong with so that. So you really want uh, maximum bang for your buck. I want bang for my buck. So, and you know, how do you get it? Though? So uh, we, have a, we have a criteria that if you... If you want funding from us, uh, you have to put in an application. And once we get your application, and if we like what you what what you're doing, then we'll send you a 12-page application. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and once you fill those out, uh, you know, which is not very complicated, because yeah. you know, it, the only reason to do that is to see: Do you have a governance policy? Do you have a structure? Do you have an organization? Because to be able to get maximum bank for your buck, mm. if you don't have all of those things in place, it's very, very difficult for our money to really work. Okay. Uh, having said that, we also do a lot of incubation. So in the sense, you know, we provide young entrepreneurs with funding. We, we have a couple of interviews with them uh, or young groups of yeah. people who uh, you know, who really are committed or dedicated. And it doesn't have to be young. There are also older people who've left existing organizations and wanted to start up their own because they didn't get along with their boards. So I think I think there's a bit of that entrepreneurship that comes into it to make an assessment, like you said, a little bit like Dragon, then to make an assessment of, you know, whether this is a viable project or not. We do assist them. We help them. And and again, going back to one of the things my dad always told me, he said, he said, son, what you give away is yours. What you leave behind, you don't know who's going to get it. So, and I know that you, yeah. uh, uh, you, you have a great deal on the water uh, factory in Myanmar, in Burma, oh, recently. Yes. And so, uh, I've seen your work. I've seen your. <laughs> <laughs> you've been, <laughs> with, I'll, I'll, I'll you've been with me in my journey. <laughs> yes, I, I believe that. Yeah. So, really, what do you get out of doing charity work? I mean, in a sense. 
you're just giving your money away. As Pure a satisfaction, that's it. Yeah. Well, I, get, I get more out of giving than out of taking. And again, you know, uh, 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 my father was a very simple guy, but he used to put things in such, at least to me, they used to make complete sense, you know. He said, as if there are two kinds of people in the world, they are givers and they are takers. We're givers. <laughs> very good. But what would you say to people listening to encourage, you know, it's easy to say these words. Yeah. Yes, right? it is. Uh, but share something from your heart, in a sense, that would, that would uh, inspire people. Because once a person goes on this path, yes. only it's one of those things you discover when you get there. The words don't mean that much. So say something that will inspire young people, old people, yeah. to, to venture into this, to try it out. I think, I think uh, you know, I, I use this a lot, is that, you know, giving is basically caring and sharing, okay? When you uh, give to your fellow man or woman, uh, this, especially when, you know, it's, it's, it's from the people who are less fortunate than ourselves, I always believe it's the satisfaction you get of actually being looking at the joy or the, or, or the comfort in the other person's face or eyes, and you just can't buy that, Feroz. Uh, Asa, what an amazing place to end our conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Feroz. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs>